Cool. So last part, uh, three tips, how to become a better front-end developer by an experienced Mr. Sun. Over to you. Um, yeah, uh, good question. So I think uh, I w- the, the tips might be different for everyone. For myself, uh, the best way uh, to become a better front-end or, or learn uh, in general is to build something. Uh, if there is uh, a new technology that has been announced, which is the case every two weeks in front end. Uh, so instead of uh, watching announcement videos about it or watching tweets about it, reading tweets about it, I would just uh, try to build something with it uh, to get a feel of um, how it is. And that's the best way I've found to learn uh, about front end development or getting better at something uh, just just build stuff uh, second is to get um, a second opinion uh, for, for a mentor or a friend or or someone else that you you all probably know someone who you really respect uh, as a tech colleague who knows stuff that um, are very niche uh, so even if they are not front end developers uh, you can ask them these general questions and get a second opinion. I think this helps uh, center the conversation. Uh, this helps calibrate your your own mindset. Do not go like in a direction very far uh, without without having some kind of anchor. So even if they don't know that technology, uh, usually if they are good in development itself, they will be able to tell you some things that you can use to decide uh, uh, what what you want to uh, to do about this new tech, uh, invest time in it. Uh, is it a, a bit like this other thing that you didn't know about? Uh, so you just talk to someone else about it and have a conversation with it. And this helps helps a lot to improve your, your skills. And, and the third one is uh, to look at the work of other people, uh, other established people, uh, this can be uh, this can be a, a lot of different forms. Uh, other people can be your seniors. It can be uh, open source projects. Uh, it can be videos about uh, educational content. Um, so all of these are just other people who are uh, putting out good content or putting out good code uh, that have been vetted. And if you just take a look at that you will most definitely pick up a few things that will help you uh, make you a better front-end developer. Uh, and if I can add a fourth one, which is very specific to front-end, uh, that would be uh, to try to think of things uh, more visually uh, in a more uh, aesthetic manner. Uh, learn about colors, learn about space, uh, because this is what help you as a front end developer, you're not just an engineer, you're also uh, the artist that paints the website for the rest of the world. Uh, so it is your job to make uh, whatever you build look good and feel good. Uh, it shouldn't be jittery, it shouldn't be junky, junky because when people will use your product, uh, it's literally what you're building that they will use. Of course, the, the back end guys uh, will also contribute to make the product successful and functional. But the first point of contact will be your work. Uh, so you should be doing stuff that you're proud of and uh, you should be using the technology to the to its best to make the best experience. That's that's how people will remember your work because, because of how they feel when they use your product. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, it's something I was... Uh, thinking about is let's say you're working on a DOS and you're stuck you're stuck for hours how what do you do usually uh if i get stuck uh i'm not one of those people who can who keeps on knocking my head and trying to make it work i just get up and and go do something else it's automatic uh because i get uh, i get bored very easily and i get uh if something is not sticking i just for me, uh, trying harder it does not make it like I don't find a solution like that. So I would ju- usually just either go do something else. Uh, usually, I, that helps getting the solution. Uh, or the other way of thinking about it is either you ask someone with more experience that you don't lose time, 
if it's really urgent, uh, you just do that. Uh, or you, it's, it's, I noticed that when you don't understand something, it means that at some point in the process, you lack information. Uh, so you need to identify what information you're lacking uh, that is not letting you uh, solve this issue. So you take a few steps back, you identify your thought process, and somewhere in there you will see, uh, actually, this part I don't really understand. Uh, how does it work? So maybe I should go look at that, and that, that helps. Usually one of these three things will, will unlock you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one last question for me, from me is that uh, what is one software that you can't live without and why? Hmm, that's, that's tricky. Um, <laughs> one software. Um, I spend most of my time in VS Code. Uh, although they are better editors, I've tried a lot of them. Uh, I think VS Code is the is the one that I spend most of my, of my time in and I wouldn't want to use something else right now mm. un unless there's something better. So I, I think I would say uh, VS Code. Um, but if I had to pick the language itself, I would pick uh, Vue, obviously. Uh, but yeah, uh, in terms of software itself, uh, VS Code, uh, yeah, that, that's it. Nice, very nice. So I think it's good for us. And anything else I diet to close the session? Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Sandit. I really appreciate the tips, uh, especially the question from Abdallah. The last one was nice. Yes, good. Yeah, I think that's how people you know the best idea you can do right now. But thanks. I appreciate that. Thanks for your time, Sandit. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.